How do you create your PDFs for your online courses? Let's take a look at how I use mine. And if you're not sure on what platforms you can use or what software or websites you can use to create yours, I do have all of these sites I'm using today and more in my 37 free tools for online course creation list, which you can download from the description below. So let's take a look at two different platforms that I use from that list. Uh, the first is Canva. So let's take a look. Here in Canva, I have so many different designs going back to many years ago as well, uh, but all different types of designs that I use for YouTube videos, that I use for online course thumbnails, that I use for presentations, and that I also use for my PDFs. So let's take a look at one which is called Checklist. Now here in Canva, if you haven't used it, you can search for, this is in Spanish, sorry. You can search for basic templates that you can use, or you can also search within all of your projects. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can use an already existing template on Canva, which is a PDF ebook, a PDF workbook, a flyer, whatever you wish. And you can start to use some of those designs, which I think is really cool. Okay, so here in Canva, I have my checklist that's already created. Um, again, if you would like to see this checklist, you can download it. I will put it in the descriptions below. And this checklist is a checklist for online course creation. So it goes through the three different phases of online course creation and then gives you a little checklist to tick off. Now, this is all well and good. These are all little square boxes, not actually checklists. So the question is, how do I turn this PDF into a usable, fillable PDF for my students in my online course? So the download button is hidden underneath this share button here, and we can find it here. So there's many different ways that you can share this uh, document. We want to download it. Now the recommended is to download it in a PNG. If we download it as a PNG, each file is a different image or each page is a different image and it gets downloaded into a zip file. And we don't want that. We want a PDF. So we just choose a PDF. Now there's two different types of PDFs. One is better when you're sending documents via email and the other one is better for printing. We're not printing. So I'm going to go ahead with this email one because we are expecting to use it online. Once we have that downloaded, I'm going to upload it into a platform that will allow me to create these little checkboxes. It will also allow me to create space here or actual text here where students can write notes and their thoughts. Now this, if you haven't used it before, is pretty cool. It's called PDF Escape. There are other platforms that you can use that are similar to PDF Escape. I find that uh, this is the most useful one for me. So once you've logged into PDF Escape, we have different options here and I want to open a new project and I want to upload a PDF to PDF Escape. If I create a new PDF, it means that I'm creating something from scratch here in PDF Escape and we don't want that because it's not very useful for designing new content. It's great for using existing content. So I'll just upload what I just downloaded here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and add in a checkbox and then we're going to add in a fillable field. So here we can see all of my different pages and I'm just going to go to the first page here. Now from here, we've got all these different elements that we can insert. Okay, we have text, we have white out. White out I really like if you don't want to show something, if you want to just blank it out. I just hit the delete button here on my keyboard to remove that. But we want to insert form fields. So all of these text, images, links, lines, they are all objects that you can put on top of this image. We don't want objects, we want form fields. So in this form field, we then have this drop down list of what we can choose. So we can have a drop down list just like this. We can have radio buttons, we can have list boxes, we can have submit buttons. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we can have here. We are going to be working with the top three. So I want to put in a checkbox. And all I do is I then drag and highlight this. Now automatically it's marked as ticked and I just click it to untick it. On the top here I have settings. 
So I can change the name of it. I can allow it to be print. I don't want it to be read only. I want students to be able to use it. I want it to be visible. We can change the check type as well. So maybe I want to cross. Okay. And okay. So now you can see it's an X. Okay. Now for me, my mind works better when I'm marking things off. I like to give it a little bit of a check. Now to duplicate, we cannot use our copy and paste keyboard shortcuts. We have to right click and duplicate and then move that around rather than duplicating i could also go in and add a new one but that's a little bit of a longer process and what i can do as well is i can go through each one and i can just continually add these like this what's going to happen though is i have to go and uncheck all of them if i have settings i have to go and do those settings and they might be different sizes so i like to duplicate you could also just click and it puts a new one in but again you have to redo all the settings you have to click the check bu button. It just, it's not as um, fluid. So when we're duplicating, we're making sure that everything's duplicated. Of course, we're making sure any of our setting is duplicated, any of uh, colors that we changed all duplicated, etc., etc. Okay. I'm going to leave it like that. Now, the next thing is on this page here, we have areas for space for thought. Now here, I'm just going to add in a form field, which is a text paragraph field. This text paragraph field allows me to add a large area where students can enter in text. Likewise here, I can also make changes to make sure that I'm uh, applying settings to make sure that it's viewable, etc. But now I have more so I can put in a max length. Zero means that there's unlimited length. These are characters and I can I want students to be able to scroll through it. So do not scroll means that they're limited to the space that's there. But if I have the scroll, they can write whatever they like. And then they then have the scroll feature to move through this field that I've created. Okay. And I can also change what my text looks like. So maybe I want it to be Verdana. Uh, I want it to be 12. I don't want it to be bold or italics. And I can also change the font color. I'm going to keep all of that to this color. So the final one that I wanted to show you, we don't have a space for this, but let's assume at the beginning that we had an area where someone can go and type in their name, for example, if you wanted that with this one, we use a form field, but this time we use text and the difference between a text and a paragraph, even though we can make this as big as we want, a text is usually a string of text, a shorter uh, space for text, whereas text paragraph is where we're able to enter. We're able to write paragraphs. We're able to do a lot more. If we go into the settings, there are the same settings here, however. OK, so once we have all of that, I am then going to download this so I can save it here in PDF Escape, but I can also go ahead and download it. Now, once that's downloaded, we can then see what it looks like. So I can go in and I can type in my name here. I can go into these check boxes and mark them off when they're completed. And finally, I can write in here a lot of information and make sure that I'm pressing enter and I can type in all of my paragraphs. So then in Thinkific, let's have a look at Thinkific, how we go and upload that. So if I go into my courses, I'm going to go into any course here. And I go into add lesson. Now here I can put a download in. I don't want to download. I actually want to upload a PDF. So then I'm just going to say checklist and upload my downloaded checklist. Once that's uploaded, I'm going to go ahead and click save. And then I'm going to preview that as an enrolled student. Okay. And if I go to checklist here, we can see here that the student can actually fill in all of this information here on their screen. So we're not getting them to download anything. We're not getting them to navigate away from anything. And they can then go ahead and download this once they've completed. Um, they can make the decision to download or fill it in online, either or. OK, so that's really quickly showing you how you would design a PDF in Canva, how you would download that and then add all of your 
text fields in PDF Escape and then how you would then upload that into Thinkific and how it looks like for your students. If you do have any questions about course creation, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget that each week I do post a new video here about course creation on YouTube. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you are notified. Until next time, happy course creating.